in the great Lebanon. So what is behind of all of these scenarios? Be, wherever there is resistance, Mukawama, wherever there is resistance, you will have these kind of nasty uh, intelligence operations from US, from Mossad, from others who try to undermine these um, uh, Mukawama, these resistance, by using dirty forces that are operating under the cover of false flags. And mm -hmm. uh, as Osama bin Laden was never a freedom fighter, he was a CIA agent, which is proved. Uh, the same goes for Daesh al-Baghdadi, who was trained by Mossad. Uh, and the same goes uh, to uh, al-Nusra Front, who is fighting the Syrian government and Hezbollah, mm -hmm. and it is, they, are, they are going to uh, the Zionist entity for medical treatment. So it's a very clear case. Mm -hmm. And what they try to do is they, use, they try to use the hell of the international media monopoly to brainwash the people um, that they don't see these kind of obvious realities. But therefore, this is our job, to connect to each other, to pinpoint the realities and the real facts, and to mobilize the people that Mukawama resistance is not only to be developed uh, fruitfully in Yemen, but also in Germany and Sweden and even the United States. Inshallah. Inshallah. Thank you, Michael. Um, Manuel is in a hurry to answer the last question. Thank you, Manuel, for staying. Um, no I was, uh, I, I'm going to ask the same question I asked Michael Oporskowski. Do you think that ongoing issues like Syria and Yemen are also a part of that initi initiated plan on September 2001? Well, yes, as I, <clears throat> as I tried to explain my first answer, I think what we witnessed at 9-11, uh, uh, 2001, is a uh, global geopolitical coup d'etat, putsch, mm -hmm. if we see how all the West was going in line, how no Western nation was any more able to, to stop, not to support what is going on. And when we see today what is going on in Syria, we see the total destruction of the country, we see masses of refugees, uh, refugee waves coming to Europe, we see what happens in Yemen, we see also, we shouldn't forget what is happening in Bahrain um, at the same time. So we see when we look on with the geopolitical patterns, we see the same front lines in all these conflicts. We see the same proxies, we see the same powers um, behind. Of course, this is a huge geopolitical battle on, on different spots. We shouldn't forget Ukraine as well. This is also um, a, um, a geopolitical battleground where we have the same allies, the same proxies, uh, very, very active. And this is a big battle of influence, which has uh, two, let me call it, two different ideologies. We have the Western ideology, which says um, it is a sort of unipolar view. We have to uh, conquer everything. Everything has to be adopted with a Western liberal point of view. And then you have, on the other side, the point of view of multi of a multipolar world, of multipolarism, which means we have different poles, we have sovereignties, we have, mm -hmm. and this is maybe the most important point, the self-determination of uh, peoples and, uh, of course, also of nations. So, yes, 9-11 um, was maybe the catalysator, the, the start point for these operations, and 9-11 opened a lot of legal opportunities, especially in the U.S., and I think our U.S.-American uh, participants were explaining already what was all of the sudden possible, not just against the own cit the, the citizens in U.S. who were not applying to this new sort of system, but also um, in wars in, in, in terms of the military industrial or the industrial military sector. So, yes, what is now going on, what we see is has to be seen in these geopolitical patterns and these front lines 
we were speaking about have to see as uh, one connected frontline and not as individual regional conflicts. And I think if we are able to do that, we are much closer also to explain our point of view. Thank you. Thank you so much, Manuel. I say goodbye to you and hope to meet you again in future episodes. Thank you for your time. Thank you to everybody. Yeah? Well, it was very interesting. I'm sorry I have to rush. <laughs> That's you, okay. Bye -bye. That's okay. We're about to finish. Take care. No goodbye. problem. Great honor to have bye. you. Okay. Anyone else uh, wants to answer this last question? Or I'd add like anything. Add on Mike, I'll, Mike Cook will take a stab at it. Yeah? Michael, are you going else? to say anything? Yeah, um, I, I think it's part of the greater Israel plan that was mm -hmm. mentioned earlier. Absolutely. And there's also, yeah, I think there's also a pipeline involved. They want to uh, bypass Russia mm -hmm. with this uh, pipeline, and they need to go through Syria. Mm -hmm. A similar situation in Afghanistan, and um, the West has been antagonizing uh, Russia for a long time, kind of trying to coax a World War III. I think they're they're really pretty scared, and they're hoping on total chaos to save their asses from the mistakes they've made. Thanks, Michael. Okay. Um, You're welcome. Thank you all. If there's anything you want to add um, to our talk, we'd be glad to hear. I'd like to add something. Yes. Sure. Nathan? Yes, Hello? please, Nathan. We're, we're okay, totally... Nathan. Uh, you guys can... Okay, you're good. Okay, cool. Um, just to kind of summarize and finalize up with that last thought, um, I do believe that there has been... Um, Um, and it's even been stated throughout Obama's tenure as president, he's invaded something like eight or Hello? Uh, people use the term uh, New World Order or One World Government and whatnot. Um, I think the, the idea that these people are using wars and death and destruction to bring about a global um, you can't unify people through bloodshed and, and killing and suffering um, people need to be united through their hearts and their minds and, and the consciousness that we all share and a common respect for our environment and the idea this planet. Um, there's people that see the resources as something to take um, and as something to profit from, um, but yes. so these governments that we've ended up putting in power to basically help us have, um, have abused their covenant to the people we can achieve uh, real unity that can stop wars, that can stop... Nathan, can you and, hear me? Um, yes, yeah, I can hear you. I, uh, you, I think uh, you're, uh, there's uh, some problem with your connection because I don't have your voice um, uh, ongoing and it gets disconnected. Um, okay, you can, you go on, please. It is just a Skype, it happens sometimes. Yeah, it goes exactly. for yeah. 10 seconds and you know. Yes. Please go on, Nathan. I would, yeah, I, I was just trying to um, bring out the idea that um, these elite people, the 1%. Hello. Hello, Michael. Hello. You're on again. Oh, okay. <laughs> I just was um, giving up. I, my call kept getting dropped. No, that's okay. Nathan was talking. Yeah. 
Yeah, sorry. And um, it's like in the idea of um, they have all the power, they have all the, the guns and whatnot, but we are still the nice. To actually create this one world government that the people want, you know what I mean? Because we put the governments in power, we, we the people can peacefully remove these governments and we can achieve this, this one world union. Yes, Nathan. Find it yeah. and create more suffering. We don't have to follow along their agenda or be uh, uh, be uh, tricked into allowing another false flag event to change uh, the course of our destiny. Yeah, well, again, exactly. I think it's the power and the people, and if we connect through love. Thank you, planet. Nathan. I think the problem with you, with your or my connection is serious because uh, I have to I keep on losing your voice again and again. Um, thank you. Anyone else uh, wants to add anything? I just hope I, just I hope would a, like a little of my message to add one or two things. Thanks, Nathan. Michael Operskowski, yes. Uh, I, just briefly, I would like to add one or two things. And, uh, you know, I would like to, to quote uh, Brother Shahid uh, Omar al Mukhta, the famous Libyan brother and freedom fighter. Yes. He was saying, we as people from the desert, we have a lot of enemies, like the biri and the snake. And we have to be careful of all, but we also we have to different, differentiate mm -hmm. between the berry and the snake. And uh, the same goes for the so-called New World Order and the West, as it is called. Right. You have United States imperialism, of course, their agenda, but you have growing competition from other Western powers, which are ex the same aggressiveness, the same uh, ugly character, but we have to differentiate because it, this is another source of a possible uh, aggravation of the Third World War, what we are in now, that there is a conflict among the Western monsters. But so, um, this I think we should be very clear about because this is another conflict that's going to come. Mm -hmm. And they're united together against the Mukawama, against the resistance of the people, but they have their own conflicting interests, especially mm -hmm. also economic and geopolitical interests. So they might be united on fighting uh, the people, but they might fight also each other. So that yeah. the people who feel safe from wars in Europe or even United States, they might feel very se severely the results of wars from now on, um, even on their their doorstep. Yes, that's, that's exactly. a very good point. Very good point. Yeah, they, they they do not agree on everything amongst themselves either. Exactly. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, Michael. Michael, go. Anything to add? Ah, uh, well, I'm sure there's a lot. Is going to win. No problem. My fish mushroom. Inshallah. Inshallah. Shalom. Oh, boy. Yes, Michael. Um, I think we all feel that there's lots to add. I mean, we all know that what's really happening. Exactly. It seems that, um, yeah, it's a lot of it for uh, Greater Israel and, of course, the New World Order. I think it was... Uh, I don't know which one it was. Um, I think it was uh, David, uh, John David Rockefeller, or one of them, who said that um, all we need is uh, uh, the catalyst uh, for it, and um, the masses, the people of, of the world, will accept the new world order. And we've learned a lot. I think they take away a lot of, of uh, lessons from. Um, Nazi Germany, like fluoridating water, for instance. Um, but I believe it's interesting that Hitler is uh, evidently quoted as saying, no one will ever ask the victor if he told the truth. 
<laughs> exactly. Yes, thank you. Teresa, anything to add? I don't really have anything to add. Thank I mean, you. I, I, I agree with what everybody said. Thank you so much. Guys, um, many, many thanks to your patience, and I'm sure that you were too busy tonight, but you gave us this honor to have a bit of your time. I really appreciate that a lot, and I hope that we'll see you in the next episodes on The Fact. Thank you again, and goodbye. <clears throat> Thank, Thank you, you Fatima. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Care. Yeah.